We are discussing the NCAA tournament selections today. And now to continue the conversation, here is... Now, this is going to throw some of you guys off because we already have an Andrew Jacobson. This is Andy Jacobs. He's uh, you, you, Usually you can hear, see him as everything is a scenario on MikeFrancesa.com, a message board dedicated to the genius that is Mike Francesa on WFAN. He joins us here in the city. Andy from Seattle, how is it going today? Oh, what's going on, Dave? Glad to uh, participate in this little podcast here. Well, I appreciate your time. I, I'm glad to have you here. And uh, you know, we are all we are ongoing discussions of the NCAA tournament. It's going to be a big one this year. But you know, lots of selections. Now, I understand you're a you're a Big Ten fan. Is that correct? No, I'm I'm, I'm being sarcastic when I said I was a Big Ten fan. Oh, okay. You know, the, the idea that they did get seven teams in. You know, a lot of the posters on the message board they have a mutual disdain for this uh, Big Ten conference. It's kind of slow. They play boring games, methodical defense. You know, the halftime score of Purdue, Ohio State today was 33-25. You know, Purdue had a high second half run for, for their standards and end up taking the, the Big Ten title and get a you know five seed. So, you know, we'll be curious to see when these Big Ten teams will get Eliminated. Each team has their own <laughs> different course. You know, it's just funny they got seven bids in at the same time. The, the Big East teams only got seven teams in. Where two weeks ago, the general consensus were, you know, they're going to eight or nine teams. So that is really be interesting to see how the Big Ten does. Do you suppose it's a Midwest bias? I'm not too sure because you'll have some people, you know, to talk you want to bring up bias or ratings or things like that, take the top four seeds. You know, Louisville, Connecticut, North Carolina, and Pitt. You know, Mike Francesca said the Big East weren't going to get three number one teams this year, but I guess he was wrong about that. But it's funny how they rewarded Louisville for short-term success by winning the Big East tournament. A couple weeks ago, they were probably a lower than Pitt and UConn, and they were in the territory that uh, with Marquette before they lost James and Villanova. And then they went ahead and ran away in the Big East tournament, and then they got the number one overall seed. And then it seems like they rewarded UConn, people can disagree with it, and I kind of disagree with it, for their long-term success, because they had a really good regular season then they lost two games in a row at the end of their season. But they still gave them the, the number one seed, obviously the, the lowest of the four. So, And I see that Washington is in their bracket, and I don't know if that's probably just a coincidence, but this would be the third time that they would play them. I mean, that's potential. Washington has to win two games, but UConn should win two games as well. Yeah, something about Washington, though. I saw them in the Pac-10 tournament and earlier this year against you know teams like UCLA and Cal. I don't know if I'm convinced by Washington personally. I mean, have you had a chance to see them play? I've seen them. Brockman, they say he brings his lunch pail to work, which is obviously the basketball court. I'm not a huge Brockman fan. I'm kind of on the bandwagon, though, because Seattle hasn't had much to root for. The Mariners are kind of lousy. They are lousy. The Seahawks had a bad season. So they've had nothing to cheer about. So people are here excited. 